Hey, welcome back everyone. Cube live coverage here in Las Vegas for AWS Amazon Web Services reInvent 2021. In-person event on the floor. Back in business, the Cube. Two live sets, pumping out content left and right. Three and a half days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Over 120 interviews, streamed 28 hours linearly on the main site as well as on the Cube Zone. Go to cubereinvent.com to get all the action. All the videos will be there. Of course, thecube.net. I'm John Furrier, your host, with Dave Nicholson, my co-host this week, and Sarvit Joel, cloud strategist, influencer, all-around great guy, Cube alumni, here to break down reInvent in context to the cloud industry. Sarvit, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Good to see you guys in person, finally. <laughs> I can't, I'm so excited. I've had all these interviews past two years in person and I've been remote, now we're in person. Great, great to do it. Everyone's excited. 27,000 people here at reInvent. Standing in line for classes. By the way, they're not offering these classes online. Only the leadership sessions and the keynotes. So if you're not here, you're not getting the classes. Yeah, I like the vibe actually. I, I thought it would be like more subdued, but it is better than what I thought. And Energy is here, but it's not like 2019. You know, there's, it's yeah. not. So. That's 60,000 people. You couldn't even yeah, get through the hallway. Um, I, I mean, any company would love to have 27,000 people, but I got to say, you know, this year, we were just talking earlier on the segment this morning. I'd love to get your thoughts on this. You go back 15 years ago when AWS rolled out, you had EC2, S3, SQS. You had to roll your own. You were basically, your alternative was better than building a data center or hosting on a colo. Okay, so great, check, you didn't have to buy the, te the, the technology tax. And, that, and then you have to fill in the glue layers. So you have to kind of yeah. roll your own and build it up. Now everything kind of scaling up and next gen cloud is a completely different architecture. You got serverless, you got all the glue layers all pretty much there and you can still add stuff on it. So a completely different mindset, changing the startup speed game, changing the enterprise. Looking pretty good. What's your reaction to the, the new architecture in cloud vis-a-vis -vis where it came from? Yeah, my reaction to the new architecture is that, number one, it's just new. Like, we change stuff all the time in, in software stacks, right? And what I sort of was, I was grasping within myself, it's sitting in my hotel in the morning listening to Warner's keynote, was that we have started to accumulate the technical debt even in cloud. So we we have we cooked up some stuff with the scripts and we automated stuff with programming language of your choice or CLIs. Then became the the, 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 the cloud formation, automation of orchestration of, of your cloud stack, if you will. And then HashiCorps are like so HashiCorp are sitting on the side there, but now there's another abstraction layer on top of that, uh, which was announced at, during Warner's uh, keynote today. So I think the, the new abstraction layers leave the previous architectures kind of a little stale. So it's always like you have, what, did you, what should you do? Should you refactor your existing stacks or should you not touch that? It just go from now on to the, on the new um, architecture. It, I think it's, a, it's getting um, busy, complicated, lot of number of services. What do you think other, other people are saying? I saw you did a little snippet with Dion Hedgecliffe online, you guys tweet there, you got a big video coming out. As you talk to other uh, folks and influencers and people in the front lines, what are they saying about Amazon reInvent this year? Yeah, I think, I think almost everybody's saying that it's, it's get, number of services is expanding like exponentially and I, I was thinking that 200 plus number of services or whatever that number is today, it's mind boggling. I totally understand that when you have two pizza teams that they want to take the credit for creating a new service and they want to publish it, they want to do the press release and all that. But my request to all cloud providers, mainly three, is to not call everything a service, new service. Call that feature of a service. So number of services has to be reduced, collapse if you will. We need umbrella services and then under that there should be features or services. That's one thing. Another sort of feedback I got from some uh, second tier partners is that they have the competency program for partners, right? And they announced that. And they, they had that earlier but there are new competencies. So it leaves the, the second or third tier partners in the cold. Only the first tier partners can get those competencies because for that they have to spend a lot of money, train people, then they got that checkbox, like, oh, you can do this. 
So I, those are the I tell I, This whole services thing, what you call a service, I mean, if you called everything a service, a new feature of DNS or a new thing here and there, serverless, there'd be thousands of features, services. Yeah. yeah. I think Amazon kind of, I think they called it down to like 200 is kind of the number we hear. But isn't, isn't that part of the role of the partner, the services provider, the consultancy, to act as a bridge between all of those services and features, whatever you want to call them, and you know, figuring out exactly what the end user customer actually needs? There's sort of a, you know, it's the idea that AWS's messaging here is targeted directly towards end user customers. There's a lot to be desired yeah, there because yes. how, do you, how do you translate that? I'm thinking, you know, compare and contrast that with sort of the Steve Jobs approach of there shall be three. Yeah. There will be a large, a medium, and a small. I know that this is more complex, but when you come out and you say 475 different kinds of instances, you're leaving that to your partners to translate. And to your yeah. point, if you're segregating those partners into categories where only a top tier has access to everything, it's yeah. an interesting place to be. So a couple of discussions I had with partners was that I actually suggest them to create a bank of you know, reference architectures, we call that at, in Amazon terms, but, but it, it's not only technical side of things, but business as well. So they need to create some like, sort of principle-based architectures and have a bank of that, and then sort of prescribe that to their customer base. I think that's the only way to simplify these things, because as you said, if they are like you have 200 different type of instances, for instance, <laughs> right, it is hard, it is really hard. So I mean, I want to get your thoughts, I mean, we talk about this on Twitter all the time, so for the folks watching, if you want to follow our rants and raves on Twitter, follow us on Twitter, you'll get all the action, all the influencers are there. Competition, yeah. I've been ranting all week, and, and been saying it for a long time, there's no real, Microsoft's not even close to Amazon. I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit over the top, <laughs> but I'll just say that if Amazon goes unchecked, Microsoft's ecosystem's going to get decimated. Because why wouldn't, why would I want to run software, my software, on a sub-optimal performance infrastructure, okay? Now, Microsoft had Windows back in the day, and they had the system software and the application suite, but they encouraged developers to build on top of Windows. Their, quote, .NET or ecosystem. .NET, yeah. Okay, so that game's over. Okay, I guess Windows runs on Amazon too, whatever, but now the cloud is the Windows. The cloud is the system software. Yeah. So developers are writing on top of the cloud. Yes, yeah. So who wins? I think, the, I think open wins, not open source. Open source and open are different things. We, all, we always discuss that. I think open wins. The closed systems um, have this, this problem of like, protectionism, which doesn't work with our little kids at home or your economy as a whole. You're, when, you, when you protect your local industry, uh, the economy goes down. I've seen that. Like, I'm a, Economist by education, <laughs> as you guys know. <laughs> yes. So, so I think it's the same. If when you protect too much of whatever you have, I think it it, it has its adverse effect. But but there's one sort of um, narrative Satya sort of narrates, if you will. He says that that hey, when you use Windows, you, we you keep everything 100%. We are not taking a cut. You know, when you're sitting in a cloud marketplace, somebody's getting a cut. You know. So that's, uh, that's the well, argument. Jerry Chen said it's not, because he, he kind of puked on yeah, what I said. Margins, yeah. He said better could win. Yes. Okay, so that's one thing. So I, okay, I buy that. I guess Azure could be better in some use cases, but I think overall, I think Amazon wins hands down uh, currently. Uh, well, you, uh, you, with you, the you custom have, processors. You haven't mentioned GCP. Yeah, uh, no, actually, the GCP. It, it, I mean, actually, what, I what can you say about it? Well, yeah, well, yeah. well, what you could say is that AWS right now has either constructed or is benefiting from the highest barrier to entry to any business in the history of our planet. Yeah. Uh, you can look at the investment that GCP is making to the tune of six billion dollars a year to go after market share. Now, are they going after current market share, which is the which is arguably the twenty percent of, of IT that's in cloud now, or are they going for future market share, which is a piece of the larger pie. So when you talk about who wins, it's still, I think it's still possible for- Hold on, hold you left on. Oracle, you left Oracle out. I think <laughs> it's still on, possible hold on, hold for on. Oracle. I'm ex-Oracle, I can tell you about oh, Oracle. Hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. This is a thought exercise. I'm going to ask you guys this question. Right. Maybe rhetorical, you don't need to answer it. If you went to all the people out there buying Azure and GCP, no offense guys, and you said, put aside all your credits you've been given, 
How much are you actually using? No, no, hold you on, take on. the incentives away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why are, how, why are you on those clouds from a performance perspective? We know that Oracle uses a lot of, yeah, sorry, sorry to cut you off. So we know that Oracle uses incentives, 5X quota release for sales and all right. that stuff, we know that. Yep, yep, yep. A lot of people know that, right? So the cloud became shelfware there. Right? Like that, we know the story, right? Like, I'm leaving Oracle to the side, but I think Google has legs. Google's cloud has legs. They are very engineering focused company. They are more open source friendly and data science friendly as well. So I think uh, they will, they will, they are actually a number two personally, I believe. I mean, I mean, developer by heart, so they are number two developer cloud uh, after Amazon. I, I think it's well known, I agree with you by the way, I think, I think people may not know this, but it's well known in the industry that Amazon has been mostly afraid of Google more than Microsoft. I think now because of this market share, the ecosystem war that's going to happen in a very short period of time, Microsoft's more of a threat, I guess, on paper, but Google's got more threat to slingshot back in front, technically, because if you look at Graviton, the stack that they're building for ISVs and developers, Microsoft clearly, I mean, uh, Amazon's clearly winning. Google can pull that off. If yeah. they didn't get it in their, if they got it out of their own way. Let me tell you, okay, <laughs> the one thing actually, if we want to know what was a fumble this time <laughs> at the event, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I have some, actually I will talk about it in my video talk and we have enough time here. So I think Google will do better because uh, they're open, they, and, and, and Amazon is complex. I was thinking when, when during the keynotes, like what are the clues in Amazon actually, AWS leaving, which is helping uh, these Google actually, Google and, and, and Azure, mainly Google. Google is simple actually, a lot simpler to use. But, I, I, but again, having said that, there's one thing actually, the new term I'm trying to define is the feature proximity. Amazon has feature proximity, like the best, you know, like you, when you are doing one thing, you want to do another thing, they have that already there. And they are ahead of the game. They are, they are like, you know, 5G, like private 5G and all that kind of stuff. It's very futuristic, kind of, like nobody. By the way, I got that. Amazon to agree to get me some private 5G for when we go back home. We're going to set an outdoor area for some oh, sure. open cube action <laughs> with some Let's 5G. Let's do that. We actually, we could put that on a, like a nice van with the logos and all that. Yes. We can move it on we'll to We'll park it right there on El Camino, right next to Stanford University. Yes. And maybe we would live in one of those things too. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll see you. get a taco truck <laughs> and I'll join you guys. Taco truck for free yeah, food. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Um, all serious guys, I want to get your thoughts as we wrap up this segment on the analysis of the cloud industry. What do you guys think, in your opinion, is going to take? I'll start by saying I think Amazon, if not contested for their leadership in the performance of silicon and the stack for software developers and owners to run the fastest they can run away with this. So I think Microsoft and Google better be you know, cranking right now to make it easy and have silicon advantage as well, and I think clearly if the ecosystem's going to be at play, because the shift is happening to modern software development, low code, no code, in every shift, everyone will go to the best performance, independent of cost and incentives. Obviously, Amazon's got lower costs too, so they got the flywheel going. I, I can make mine short. I think GCP can also be successful, but I think that already the amount of momentum that AWS has, the wind behind its sails, uh, I, I was at EMC for many years and we used to joke about our arch nemesis, Hitachi Data Systems, and saying that they were quite discouraged every morning as they woke up, learning that they were a year further behind. Every night they went to sleep. Yeah. They woke up the next day and they were a year further behind. behind. Watching the announcements coming out of this event this week, I think there are some people at GCP and Microsoft and others who have that sense, uh, but having said that, we're at the dawn of the era of cloud. There's plenty of room for a lot of players. Um, when you give us your thoughts, I'd like your, your answer to the question, how much are consumers in the driver's seat today? Will, 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 yeah. will the customers be able to demand multi-sourcing? Multi yeah, I think, I think customers, like, you vote with your money, right? So customers can demand that, but at the same time, customers can get stuck in a, a platform and they can't get out. I mean, there's a, we usually talk about vendor lock-in, like, there's one thing that Amazon keeps saying that we are open, we're open, and the other vendors are like these brands. Uh, I think that's, I think that that can that kind of narrative can come bite, bite back, you know, to them. Yeah, it's like it's not a good thing to say. Like you don't don't want to be cocky about 
your features or you, you are the best and all that stuff. I think you, have, you want to stay humble and <laughs> respect the other guys as well yeah. because they are coming right behind you. I yeah. think um, the, uh, the key is developers. I have the bias toward developers because I was a developer, but I, I, I think I totally believe deep down, I've actually I, I have tried to put my hat, developer hat off and still think that way about these constructs, if you will. The developers are the people who call the shots. If you are not developer friendly, you can't do much. That's a good point. So that's my, that's my warning to uh, Amazon, don't, don't go away from the developer. You are number one developer cloud, stay there. Industry focus is good, but like put that to the side, not make that front center. Google right. has made that front center, I think that's a mistake. Yeah, and you got the features, the right features, but again, speed, performance. Developers, Developers capture yes. the opportunity. I mean, developers want to move fast. Yeah. I mean, that's the entrepreneurship. So it'd be great to have you on theCUBE, great to see you. Thanks for having me here, and I enjoyed it. Great set here. All right, Dave Always Nicholson's here. Nice you guys. Nice Dave to Nicholson, you. CUBE host, I'm John Furrier. You're watching theCUBE, the world leader in tech coverage. We'll be back with more live coverage from reInvent after this short break. <laughs>